I may have made them a little bit dirty. Hello everyone, my name is Stephen. Welcome to Film My Run. If you've not seen this channel before, um, I've been around a little while, but I make real world running videos. So I, I film my marathons, my ultras, um, some triathlons as well in the real world, and I edit them down and post them online. Um, I've not really been into making review videos, but I am starting to do so because everybody is asking me to make product reviews. So here we are. Disclaimers out of the way, I am not sponsored by Hoka. You may have seen uh, my recent video of the CCC Ultra Race in Chamonix, uh, which was partly sponsored by Hoka, uh, but I am not a Hoka representative, and the shoes I am going to show you today I purchased with my own money, actually probably my wife's credit card, but nevertheless my own money essentially. But I am sponsored by a company called Zwift, they're an eSports company. We do um, running and cycling online. So you can go to zwift.com forward slash running and sign up. They also do cycling. Um, it's an online game, but you actually do do the running and the cycling. So you run on a treadmill um, in a virtual world. And I do a lot of that. And if you look at my channel here, you'll see a lot of Zwift online running videos as well. So that's who I am. Let's get into the review of the Hoka Mafate Evos. Here they are, they are somewhat dirty. I was going to wash them, but I thought, no, do you know what? Let's show you them as they are after they've been well used. And these have been well used over the past few. Let me see what Strava says. Strava says I have done over 150 miles in these, 250 odd kilometers. I have been wearing hockers quite a lot over the past few years, so I started off with some Challenger ATRs. Um, I've also got some Clifton road shoes, um, and for a long time now I've been wearing the Speed Goat 2. The Speed Goat 2 was a great shoe, but it did have some flaws, and the flaws mainly centered on the upper. And now let me just show you. So if you had the original Speed Goat 2s, you would see that they always split here, look. Can you see that split there? Where the plastic met the material here. There was all, they always seemed to split at the bend of the foot there. Then they came out with the Hocker Speed Goat 2 version 2, which kind of did away with the split down here, kind of made that a solid piece of plastic there. Uh, so it didn't split anymore. But the other big problem for me with speed goats was the Vibram sole, which certainly for me on some runs, I found that the lugs were not deep enough um, and I didn't get enough grip on certain kind of rock or chalk, that kind of thing. So I thought I'd try something new. Step in the new Mafate Evos. Way back in 2009, the Mafate was the first shoe Hocker made. It's developed a lot obviously since then, and uh, we've had the Mafate Speed and now the Evos. Hoka say the difference between the Mafate Speed and the Evo here is to do mainly with the midsole in that they've used a different kind of cushioning, two different kinds of cushioning, um, one called R-Bound, which is more durable and lighter, apparently. But I've never worn the Hoka Speed, so I can't comment on the difference between the two. So let's have a look at the main features of the Mafata Evos. We bought these brand new at the Hoka stand in Chamonix before the CCC race at the UTMB week. As long as you're confident that you've got the correct fit for your feet, Trail shoes should just mould in and be perfectly fine. I wore these brand new for a 100 kilometre race over tough terrain, lots of climbing. I mean, if you know CCC, you know what it's like. Um, and they were brand new when I put them on. Uh, and this is, what, this is what they look like 150 miles later. If you want to see uh, them on my feet brand new, go and look at my CCC video on this channel. Uh, you'll see them beautifully shiny and clean, and then you'll see them totally covered in mud at the end of the race. Uh, so go and do that. The upper is a Kevlar mesh material. Um, it feels very durable, uh, and over 150 miles in, it hasn't ripped anywhere at all as far as I can see. Uh, so it seems after 150 miles that it is a good, solid, strong material. Feels very comfortable as well on the upper foot. Underneath is the usual Vibram Mega Grip. 
different to the Speedgoat 2s in that the lugs are definitely deeper. And I've definitely noticed a difference when I'm going downhill um, on chalk or rock. Uh, the grip is much, much better than the Speedgoat 2s. So the only time that I actually slipped over using these shoes um, during the CCC 100k race was um, on a very steep section uh, of grass where it had been raining. So it wasn't like mud where you could kind of, the, the, the lugs go into the mud and grip the mud. They kind of stayed on top of the grass and the grass was wet and I mean everybody was slipping. I didn't see anyone who was able to stay upright. So I don't think there's any trail shoe really that could have coped. I've never worn the terra claws or mud claws, but I don't think there are any shoes that could have coped with, with that terrain particularly. And all, all the other terrain that I ran on, that I have run on in these shoes, these shoes have managed very well indeed. Obviously you've got lovely thick cushioning, Perfect for really long distance running, very comfortable, as are the ATRs and the Speed Goats. I've never had a problem with the comfort in the Hockers. Absolutely wonderful to wear for 100 mile races and longer. The main weird thing that I've noticed about the Evos is the tongue. Now if I compare, let's get these Speed Goat 2s, you've got quite a thick, long tongue here. Quite comfortable doesn't slip around, it's perfectly all right. Why they've changed it in the Mafate Evos, I don't know. Um, this is, I can't even really get it out for you, but it's a very flat, very thin tongue. Um, it does lie f nice and flat against your foot, um, but it is a bit weird. And there is a problem with this because I've noticed when running long distances, that this edge here, the edge of the tongue, digs into my foot. And when I've taken my shoes off, I have got a cut, an abrasion on my foot where the tongue has dug in. I guess that will only happen to you if you're wearing these shoes for really long distances. But then again, these shoes are made for running really long distances in. So it's not a great thing and perhaps something they might think about changing in the future. And one other thing I've noticed after 150 miles of running in this shoe, um, there is one place where they seem to be coming apart a little bit. If you can see right on the end of the toe here, some of the stitching between the outsole and the material, some of the stitching is coming a bit loose. Let's see if the other one, the other one is worse. So you can see here, that's after 150 miles, the stitching is just coming away there. There's no rip of the material as such, but it's definitely, the stitching has definitely come away from the join between there and the outsole. That said, in terms of a trail shoe, these are without doubt the best trail shoes I have worn, certainly for running distances of 100 miles and more absolutely will wear these from now on over and above Challenger ATRs, over and above Speed Goat 2s and even the version 2 Speed Goat 2. The grip is much better, comfort is about the same but still great, um, but durability these do seem to have lasted a lot better um, after 150 miles than the uh, Speed Goat 2s and certainly the Challengers. Challenger ATRs when I ran Transvolcania, um, 75 kilometers over volcanic rock, the soles of my Challenger ATRs were completely wrecked. Um, the same race and other 100 mile races with the Speed Goat 2s, very quickly the split in the side happened. That hasn't happened with the version 2 Speed Goat 2s, but I feel the difference is the uh, outsole on these is better than the Speed Goat 2s version 1 or version 2, um, so I will be sticking with these from now on. In terms of price, well there's your problem. The Evos are expensive, probably one of the most expensive trail shoes you are likely to find. About 150 UK pounds, what's that? Is that 200 US dollars? Um, very expensive 
For me, they're worth it because mainly what I do is long distance ultra running where taking care of my feet is very important. So comfort, durability of the shoe, really important factors. Um, but for you, obviously, you have to decide whether it's worth spending that amount of money. Okay, in terms of width, you might have a problem if you need a wide toe box. Hoka generally do tend to be a little bit narrow. Although, you know, I used ultras in the past because I thought I needed a wide toe box, but actually these have been fine, as have my Hoka Cliftons and the Speed Goats as well. I've not really had much of a problem in terms of width. Certainly the Speed Goat 2s are wider than the Speed Goat 1s, um, and these are about the same as the Speed Goat 2s. I'm not generally one to suffer with blisters uh, or hot spots on my feet when running. I, I tend to be very lucky in that regard. So you might want to take this with a pinch of salt, but I've not had any problems with hot spots or blisters or anything to do with problems with my feet when wearing these shoes. But I don't tend to anyway. I do wear in gingy socks and I do wear a little rubber toe cap over my big toe and I always make sure that I cut my toenails before I go in the long run. So if you do suffer with blisters in any type of shoe, maybe just make sure that you, you wear decent socks, you take care of your feet in terms of cutting the toenails right down before you do a really long run. And maybe, yeah, you might, you might wanna try the silicone or rubber toe cap you need to get specific running ones because the ones you can get off Amazon uh, will shred very quickly. So in summary, it is a win for the Hocker Mafate Evos in terms of durability, in terms of comfort, and they look pretty good too, so it's a win there. In terms of price, maybe not so much, depending on what you think you're gonna need them for, how much you're gonna use them. It's very easy to get sucked into the hype about this shoe. At the moment, this shoe is the one that is being marketed by Hoka as the shoe for long distance trail running. And you know, Jim Wormsley wears them, um, Tom Evans who won the CCC that I raced in, he wears them. They really are being pushed by the Hoka team as the shoe to wear. So perhaps you don't want to get drawn into the hype, but honestly I urge you, do try them out, because in my opinion they are definitely the best shoe that Hocker have produced so far, the most comfortable shoe that Hocker have produced so far, and the most durable shoe that they've produced so far. What else am I supposed to mention in a review of trail shoes? Upper, durability, comfort, Cushioning, uh, the sole, grip, heel drop, I mean, you know. I guess I should try and create some kind of scoring mechanism for my reviews. As yet, I haven't worked out one, uh, but you know, I will. I, I will, I will at some point work out how to score all this stuff. Uh, the problem is you don't want to copy other people, do you? So I need to kind of create my own, how do you do that? Because like this, right, the only, there are only certain things you can score. You can score the outsole, you can score the upper, you can score how good they look, you can score the cut, the price of them. So th there's only so many things you can do, you know, without, I don't want to appear like I'm copying Ethan, for God's sake. I mean, let's be honest, there are other reviewers out there who do product reviews. I'm not, I don't want to try and be like them. I don't want to try and copy them. But at the same time, if we are reviewing a shoe, there's, you know, there are going to be things that I mention that other reviewers mention which are the same. It doesn't mean I'm copying them or they're copying me. Um, but there will be, of course, things that I mention which other reviewers don't, things I pick up on which other reviewers perhaps don't, and vice versa. Suffice to say, I absolutely love these Mafate Evos. I will be running in Mafate Evos for the foreseeable future. I think my many pairs of Speedgoat 2s will have to sit in the cupboard for quite a while from now on. And that is it guys, that is my review of the Hoka Mafate Evos. If you've got a comment, if you've used the Evos, please do comment down below. Let me know what you think of them. Let me know what your choice of trail shoe is. I am just getting into doing product reviews, so let me know what you think. We'll try and do more. Let me know if there's any products you'd like me to review. If I can get hold of them, I will. Do please 
click below to subscribe to the Film My Run YouTube channel and you know that bell icon thing that lets you know when I've uploaded it. Do you know what? I wish I was like eight years old and I could do all that. Smash that like button, click the bell down below to get notifications of when we release a new video. But I'm not eight, so you know, just do the stuff that you know you gotta do. If you want to see more videos by me, if you want to see more product reviews, subscribe and do let me know in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, take care, bye bye. Is that okay?